we're still here. Pete, this, welcome back to Score on Business, and we're still with Jason Palmer. So, Jason, if a company already has an IT department, would they still consider a fractional CIO? Well, in short, yes, they would. Um, there's really two scenarios. So, you, you either could not be getting what you want from IT, right? Like a broken IT department, and you want to bring somebody in to help correct it. Uh, or the other thing is you have good IT and you want to improve and you want to uh, strategize. Right. And really you know, that leads to, well, why do you need an IT strategy? If, you know, if I think everything's maybe working, I probably am okay without an IT strategy. And, you know, I'll, I'll go, if you look at um, uh, Target and Toys R Us, back in 2001, both of those companies, actually in 2000, Toys R Us decided we're going to outsource our entire e-commerce to Amazon. Target in 2001 decided to do the same thing, which sounds a little crazy now because they look like competitors, but they were in good company. Uh, back then, Borders did it, Circuit City did it, Toys R Us, yeah. Target, they all did it. Um, retail sales were only 1% of their sales, so that they didn't think it was a big deal. Well, fast forward. and. Um, and, and back then, Amazon was only $4 billion. Uh, now, they're, I think they're $850 billion market cap. So, if you fast forward, in 2011, 10 years later, yeah. Target looked and with their IT strategy, they said, this is not working. And they invested billions of dollars, several billion dollars in creating a website. Toys R Us, on the other hand, um, looked at it and said, uh, this is not working, and we're going to spend $100 million over three years, so $30 million a year. Um, 33 million a year, which for a company that size is nothing. So this really goes to why you need a strategy. One of them obviously is here and one that's not. Um, and you know, Circuit City and Borders did the same thing. They're also not here. Um, so that's, you need an IT strategy and you need to invest in technology. Um, so really for a smaller company, uh, one of your key things is going to be uh, investing with for a managed service provider. A managed service provider, what's called an MSP, uh, they're going to take care of all your day-to-day -day things. So they're going to take care of computers, the utility things that I was talking mm -hmm. about. Let them take care of that. You can't at 100, uh, 100 or really up to 200 or 250 yeah. employees, you, you can't hire the people that can take care of that effectively and efficiently. You really need an MSP. You need a good MSP. And there's, there's some things you should look at, but do, certainly do your homework and get a good MSP, but you do need an MSP. So how do you, um, how do you find a good MSP? Um, so when you're looking for an MSP, um, you really you want to be looking for a track record of success. They've been around for a while. And then do some, you know, this is a little tough, but go online, read reviews, talk to references like you would with any other vendor. Mm -hmm. um, they should be talking about security. If they talk to you nothing about security and they're not insisting on multi-factor or two-factor authentication, right. don't stop talking to them. Um, they should have cloud experience. Um, they should host, if the, these companies will normally host their email for you, mm -hmm. they should be doing it in either Microsoft 365 or Google Cloud or some public cloud. They should not be, if they're hosting the email on their premise or in their data center, walk away. That, that, that is a horrible sign um, and it's a sign that you're going to have some problems with uptime. Um, they really shouldn't walk in and say, I know all the technologies that you need before talking to you. Uh, that's, a, that's a vendor who has some back-end deals. Um, the, the only exception to that really is email, uh, like either Microsoft 365 or Google. That's pretty much a standard, so if they come in talking about that, yeah. that's not a red flag. But a lot of the other technologies would be if they don't know your business yet. Um, and they also, the biggest thing is ask them for some metrics. A professional, well-run MSP will have metrics. So ask them about average response time, uh, average resolution time, customer satisfaction um, numbers. And while you're at it, ask them, you know, do you see a drop in tickets? How many, because they should be doing root cause analysis on problems because they're running your help desk at that point. And the number of calls to the help desk should go down over time because they're doing root cause analysis and fixing problems. So ask them those questions. If they look at you and they don't have any metrics, walk away and go to the next one. There's a lot of very good MSPs in Nashville, uh, but there's also a lot of uh, poor ones uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, that sadly is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing a lot of a lot of businesses in Nashville are fairly small. 50 people or under, maybe 20, you know, and a lot uh, smaller than that. One thing that I think may be an error 
if you have an IT person who is going to help with, you know, with desktop support and that kind of thing, that's that is not a CIO. That no, that person is not a CIO. Um, they're a day-to-day -day person. There's a real difference between you know an IT manager, a right. director of IT, and a CIO. Um, and it's not taking anything away from them. They're just different roles, and you might need yeah. both. But one is not strategy, and one is strategy. Right. Um, and you also, if you only have one IT person, um, to that effect, you, you really should have. You, you want your people working on revenue generating core business things. If that person is fixing, running around the office fixing computers, you really should have an MSP doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's not what we do, so I'm not pushing that for that reason. Right. It's just a smarter way to do well, it. Well, MSP, when you take into account the full cost of an employee, yeah. um, you know, you probably save money you, with them. You, you probably do, um, and it really depends on the number of computers you have, and yeah. um, you may get to an economy of scale where one person can kind of take it, but they can't do it effectively and efficiently and the right yeah. way over time. Um, so you really do want to have that MSP, but you know, to your question, an IT person uh, or the IT guy or IT girl at work is different than a CIO. A CIO is a leadership position, uh, it's a strategy position, uh, and it's really, a, they're a member of your executive team. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have an IT manager, I would en encourage you to think about it and say, if that person's not on your executive team, there's either two reasons. Either they're either you don't think that they'd make a good executive, in which case you need a CIO or a fractional CIO, or they you think maybe they could and you just haven't thought of it, and give that person a shot then. Put raise them to that executive level if you believe that they could be there. But okay. IT deserves a seat at the executive table. Awesome. Okay. Well, we are about out of time for today, Jason. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here. Ladies and gents, we shall see you next week. Bye now.